Uh, the A7M1 M2 propeller performance has been recalculated. Polars uh, on the prop, fins and fuselage completely updated. Maximum speed at ground level and low altitude has been increased. Oh dear. Thermodynamics updated. Reactive moment is now more noticeable in full control mode. Well, the A7M1 and M2 were already very good aircraft, and also with the popularization of the Japanese nation in this update, my god, we're going to see a lot of those premium A7s running around. And if they have more speed on ground level, uh, I don't know uh, what to do with them. I mean, basically all you've got to do is uh, get them to follow you up to really high altitude and then annihilate them, but that can be very hard to do. The A36, uh, the rudder response curve has been corrected according to reports. You're at high speeds reduced. Okay, that's nice. Uh, Meredith effect for radiators has been set similar to that of the Mustangs. Wing polars uh, have been recalculated. WEP has been increased. Now 100% throttle is the same power that WEP previously had. Hell yeah! We got a bit more power in that A36. Cruise mode activated. Modern thermodynamics system added. Engine started, stop modes tuned, propeller spin up at ground level and in a dive updated. Pitching is possible if brakes are used. Whoa! A36 is getting a whole makeover and it was already good before. Now it's going to be pound town. Going to be great. The CR42, the rudder response curve at low speeds has been improved. Stability in cruiser mode uh, has also been improved. The pitching is possible if brakes are used. Engine starts and stop modes tuned. Propeller spin up at ground level and in a dive updated. I'm going to have to try out the CR42 once again. A really good aircraft. My guess is that it has just got a little bit better. My god, there's a lot of naval stuff. Stuff. I'm just seeing how much there's left, just so work out if I need to take a drink or not. So, uh, let's have a look at the naval fleet model, damage model characteristic and weapon changes. Characteristics of all naval 40mm bofors have been updated depending on the mount type. Okay, uh, so depending on which bofors you have or where it's mounted, uh, you know, you should have different characteristics on it. That's a little bit odd. Uh, a bug where... There was no distance correction after firing rounds with a time fuse has been fixed. Okay, so now they're actually usable. All naval guns where different crew members are responsible for vertical and horizontal guidance, as well as all turrets that are rotated by a single crew member, can now be guided in both dimensions simultaneously. Wonderful stuff. So instead of having to move horizontal, like B, and then B, like kind of like, you know, those cranes that you see in, uh, <laughs> you know, the cranes that you see in like, uh, theme parks or like, you know, uh, gambling places where it goes horizontal and then it goes vertical and then you got, to pick up with the claw and then get whatever uh, if you win. Uh, now it seems to be more of a fluid motion where it works on the x-axis and the y-axis at the same time. Uh, the ship shell armor penetration table sheets have been expanded in their respective game cards, so that's good. Uh, all naval rockets and jet bombs have been corrected in terms of traction, speed, and acceleration. Lovely. Uh, it would be nice to have a little bit more... Um, well be able to move the rockets a little bit more instead of just firing them straight. Uh, the missile sights on ships have now been fixed. Uh, now you're able to aim using it. Oh, thank Christ. Uh, that was that was an issue that we had in uh, air. That was an issue we had in ground. And it was also an issue in naval. Nice to see that it's been fixed in naval. Armor pissing shells have been removed for German 88, 105, and 127s. Cost SLG and RP for modification research have been compensated. Instead, there will now be HE shells with a tail fuse available for research for 105 and 127 mm cannons, as well as anti aircraft HE shells. Also, 88 mm can now have high explosive fragmentation in sendry shells. So they're taking away AP. Uh, from these large caliber guns, this may have a decent amount of difference against some of the light cruisers, uh, but overall it still should be okay. They still should be able to dish out the damage as long as they have some kind of AP shell, and if they don't, well, that's a pretty big nerf, actually. Germany 150mm KC-36 SKC-25 cannons now have anti-aircraft HE shells. Uh, so basically the main guns on the new light cruisers and also the destroyer they just added, uh, the 1936A. So uh, they'll have fun. Uh, the smokescreen modification has been moved from the 4th to the 2nd level and from the firepower section to the unsinkability section. Nice, so it's actually easier to get this modification now. 
The rigid research sequence of researchable uh, shells and belts has been removed to allow for greater flexibility with player selection. Thank God. One of the biggest issues that I've talked about in the past about naval is the fact that you start off with an absolutely awful shell against the larger ships, and then once you get the better shells, you know, you can actually kill them, or at least you can actually hurt them. So for me, uh, this is wonderful. This is a nice change, and uh, hopefully we see more of this in the future when it comes to ground vehicles and also for aircraft. Instead of this rigid structure of you get this shell now, then you get this shell now, maybe we can do a min-maximum kind of thing. Maybe Maybe I'll talk about it, talk about it in a video. We'll have to see. <sighs> Uh, where were we? Many armor piercing and HE shells with the bottom fuse have been moved down to a low level for quicker opening in the modifications window. Lovely. The arming and fusing parameters for the shells with radio fuse has been set accordingly to the historical data. Good. The MO4, radio area increased, modification rocket launcher has been moved to the fourth level. I mean, I haven't found a rocket launcher modification that is useful so far, so that is completely fine. The PGH2, gun recoil has been added for the Bofors. Oh, okay. Uh, camera position while zooming in third person view has been fixed. The Brave class x-ray model of the Bofors gun has been fixed. Lovely. The TS boot projects uh, 206, 206, 206M. Uh, radar animation added. Lovely stuff. It's always the small things which make me happy when it comes to these updates. The PR-186 MK-85 uh, AA turrets repair issue has been fixed. Good. Uh, the 186 AA turrets uh, repair issue has been fixed and barbette armoring added. Ooh, that'll be interesting to look at. The Sumner bridge x-ray model has been fixed and the location of the ammo has been corrected. Good. Uh, the Clemson DD-336, DD-213, lifeboat model changed, <laughs> X-ray model changed for the 11th and 12th torpedo in the torpedo launches. The uh, Tashkent vessel draft in the hangar updated, fume effect added, nice. Uh, the BMO, 21k gunner position has been changed. Uh, okay, I'm wondering how that will affect the BMO. Uh, the Benian. Uh, the damage model of the front and rear fuel tanks have been updated, more elevators have been added, ammo allocation updated. The cowl and the Fletcher, the damage model of the front and rear fuel tanks have been updated, more elevators have been added. The S100 Lang and the S100 camera position after joining the battle has been fixed, thank god. It was kind of annoying how it would whip around at the start. The S100 a stabilizer has been added for the MK103. Well, that just means it's more deadly, but the issue with the S100 1944 is that that you see ammo at the front of it because of that MK103, kind of feel bad for it. The Trenton and the Rally, max speed has been updated uh, from 32.6 knots to 34, uh, so they get a little bit faster. The 89 foot PT810, Mark II gunner model has been fixed, step charges model extra has been fixed, stabilizer has been added for the Mark III and 40mm Bofors, lovely stuff. The Fairmile D, Fairmile D, Fairmile D, main caliber gun now has 360 degrees of rotation. Thank the lord, this definitely helps uh, the Fairmile, it would get stuck in very odd areas with this main caliber gun, nice to see that they've fixed that. The Dark Class, uh, the FBB1101, visual discrepancy of the shaft axis uh, for the 115mm cannon in the x-ray view has been fixed, lovely. Uh, I kind of just let that gun do its own thing. The VS-10, illuminates a glass removed from armor model of the vessel. Oh, very sad, uh, so it actually loses some armor. The Vosper 1 series, coaxial MG reload, has been changed from 10 to 8 seconds. Whoa, watch out. Uh, the, Ves the Vosper 1 reserve British vehicle is coming to get you. The Consomolets and the PR123K, prices for the Dishka ammo belts are now equal to each other. Good stuff. Uh, the Krasny Krim X-ray model of the rear main caliber gun has been fixed. The Krasny Cap Cats, the 180mm B1K, has received new ammo. Semi APPB. Uh, 32 an AA grenade ZS 32 with time fuse. My God, uh, the the 180s are just going to be so good. Uh, I I I am looking forward to see how hard they donk on people. Elko 80 foot PT 556 Thunderbolt, a bug where there was no indication of the auxiliary uh, caliber guns ammo has been fixed. The Kern modifications of the 88 millimeter ammo have been fixed. Nose magazine position has been updated. The LCSL3 amount of rounds per barrel of the Bofors has been increased. Ooh, uh, so the LCSL3. Uh, has been really good for a long time and it's just been going up and up and up and beyond. It's nice to see it actually get a buff here. 
uh, if it is historically accurate. Overall, it's still a really good machine, even though it's basically a mini destroyer and it gets annihilated by destroyers. Uh, everything else in that bracket does as well. The SGB S304 and a load of the 40mm guns has been fixed. Previously, it was equal to the amount of ammunition of one reload, so the gun wasn't fully loaded. Instead of 2,000 shots for each barrel, it is now 1960 which corresponds to 35 magazines. Good stuff. Uh, so not that much different, but, you know, it's it's good to be historically accurate. Vosper 2 series. Ammo load of the 20mm guns has been fixed. Previously, it was equal to the amount of ammunition of one reload, so the gun wasn't fully loaded. Instead of 2,000 shots for each barrel, it is now 1980, which corresponds to 33 magazines. So pretty much the same thing as the SGB. The HMS Leander, a bug with one of the engine rooms as being invulnerable, has been fixed. That would have been interesting if it made it to life. The Asheville uh, stabilizer has been added to the Mark III mount with the 40mm buffers. So that is, that is quite a large buff, actually. Elko 80 footer, a stabilizer has been added to the 37mm. Same with that one. Elko 77 footer, visual divergence of the 40 millimeter both a barrel axis in the x-ray mode has been fixed nice and then for the Carl Golster type 1939 and the cannon boots all of these have an issue with their 37 millimeter gun guidance it's been fixed and their visual x-ray model of a torpedo tube has been fixed on the Carl Golster the 1939 visual model of the vessel has been fixed the K2 magazine's positions have been updated the Dido, the visual divergence of the main caliber gun axis uh, barrels in X-ray mode has been fixed. The Mark 13 torpedo incorrect modifications have been <laughs> removed. Well, that's nice. The order of starting torpedoes on the S-38 in the X-ray view of the vessel has been fixed. Whoa, got through it. So these are the economy and research changes. These will obviously affect you, not when it comes to matchmaking, but when it comes to research. So one thing to remember is uh, rank does not come into account when it comes to matchmaking. The only thing that matters in matchmaking is the battle rating of the vehicles that you are using. So therefore, if you are using an 8.0 lineup, you can go up plus uh, one or down minus one. So you can be uh, bottom tier at 9.0 or you can be top tier in a 7.0 battle. Rank has nothing to do with battle rating. Rank only has anything to do with uh, your research of other vehicles because if you are using let's say a rank 6 vehicle it's going to be the best for researching a rank 7 or a rank 5 vehicle uh, or an actual you know, rank six vehicle itself. That's the only thing that matters uh, when it comes to rank, uh, when it comes to uh, research. So the F9, F86, F2, uh, American is moved to rank six. So is the F9, F8, rank six. Is that the lowest uh, BR rank six? It might be. The FJ4B is also at rank six now, and so is its uh, premium gift counterpart. The CL13A uh, is at rank six. MiG-17 rank six. Hunter F1 rank six. Uh, the, it seems like they've moved uh, a bunch of stuff to rank six to kind of just fill it out, which makes sense, you know. That's pretty much what they did when ground forces hit uh, rank six. The F86 F40, the BR has been changed from AB from 8.0 to 8.3 and RB and SB 9.0 to 9.3. Uh, the reason they've done this is because they've added AIM 9Bs to it and uh, it was already a very good vehicle. You know, the F40 was seen as one of the best sabers in the game uh, alongside the uh, Canada Air, so moving it up in BR because it gets air to air missiles, I think it's completely fine. The F9 F2 and F9 F5 being grouped, that's good. Uh, one of the issues with the naval side of the American tree is that a lot of them are pretty much, well, I wouldn't say all-purpose fighters, but they definitely have had issues in the past of being meta, so grouping them means that you don't have to get both of them. The C1A and the C2B ME262s have been grouped as well. That's nice to see, so you can get past them quicker to get to your Canada Airs. The AC-17 has been grouped with the AC-15, uh, I, I understand why they've done that, but, uh, if, if you want a different experience in jets, I would definitely say go and, uh, play the AC-15, the AC-15P and the AC-17. They're a lot of fun, and they'll also teach you how to aim because you have absolutely no ammunition. The MiG-15 and MiG-15 BIS have also been grouped. All of these make sense because they've just added a bunch of new jets, right? You know, <laughs> so, uh, they're making it easier to get to top tier and grouping the relevant ones. The Meteor F Mark IV G41F and the G41 
G41G have also been grouped in the uh, research trees. The PR159 has been moved to rank 2. All right, then. Uh, God damn that patrol boat. So that thing is just ridiculous. And now we're going to get a uh we're going to get a squadron vehicle which is pretty much a copy of it at least when it comes to armament the time 90 has been moved to rank 7 godspeed my japanese friend connections between the soviet us and german ground vehicle trees have been added this means that uh, you'll have to research more vehicles before you get to the top tier i think personally this is a good idea i like the fact that uh, people should try and uh, play all aspects of war thunder and doing this means that you kind of force people to which you know a lot of people look down on uh, but for me i think it's all right premium ground vehicles the t55am leopard a1a1l44 xm1cgm and shock cal delay have been moved to rank six this isn't a surprise you want to make sure that the people who have bought these things don't get too annoyed especially when they've added rank seven in i've said for a very long time that these vehicles are rank sixes masquerading as rank fives so now seeing them back up uh, to me at least it it looks like they're in their correct place. I'm fine with the shot cal delay being at 8.3. I think it could easily go up to 8.7 if it wanted. This is talking about BRs. And then the T55AM and the Leopard A1A1L44, I would put at 9.0. Right, it's as simple as that. After In My Centauro constantly being on those teams, the reason why the Soviets win is if their T55AMs can kill our Leopard A1A1L44s, and if our Leopard A1A1L44s uh, kill the T55AMs, then we win. That's pretty much how it goes at 8.7 right now, and it's very sad to see, and I, I would want to push them up in BR because of that. And I'm sure once... Uh, you know, these new vehicles, uh, the new MBTs get pushed to 10.3 or 10.7, they will go up. Purchase cost in SL of some rank 5 Soviet, US and Japanese aircraft have been uh, decreased. I believe we've actually talked about this in the past. Uh, yeah, it's this one. This uh, this is the economy changes that are going to come after update 1.87, but these are the ones which have been changed right now. So you can see across the board, uh, you are gaining, uh, well, it's weird to say gaining, uh, but <laughs> the prices are going down, therefore you're going to have to spend less SL on them. I think overall this is good. Uh, this means that people will be able to play the vehicles that they want to play and not be hampered by the amount of SL that they have, or at least a lot less hampered, I should say. The purchase cost of crew qualifications on the destroyed Leningrad has been reduced. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, I'm, we're looking to do a custom battle with the Leningrad on, uh, on Sunday. If you want to, you know, get more details, make sure to join the Tech Hub Discord. There is a link in the description. Customization wise, a set of icons depicting maritime crew has been added. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, so more profile pictures. I'm always a big fan of them. A deforming tricolor pattern for Soviet top rank ground vehicles has been added. Uh, we saw that on the dev server. It does look quite nice. Some decals for the identification mark groups are no longer free. Very sad. Uh, additional tasks to receive them and the opportunity to purchase them for GE have been added. So at least, you know, uh, we, you can grind them out if you want to. The color of the basic camouflage, the Type 60 SPRG and Type 61 has been changed. It's actually been become a little bit darker, so it's not just bright turquoise, so you stick out like a sore thumb. Sore thumb, I think this is a good change. Uh, the Z20 Kalgosta, instead of two decals, a skin with images of its current flags on its deck has been added. This made it possible to free two slots for decals on the ship. The decals themselves remain available in the set. Lovely. The F-100, two additional camouflages have been added, and both of them are really nice. Uh, we're pretty much talking about Vietnam camouflages at this point, and just um, one of them's kind of like a show camouflage, and the other one is an actual uh, what our class is battle camouflage. Both are wonderful to see, uh, so definitely check them out. Interface stuff, so information about structural material and the thickness of the hull and superstructures has been added to the ship cards. More information is always good, so this is a positive change. Information regarding earned medals has been added to the player info cards. This was actually added before day 1.87, but it's nice to see a change log which clarifies when it was added. Game mechanics. Now, <laughs> god damn, uh, there's so much stuff. We're nearly there though. Uh, so the radar station mechanics for ground vehicles and aircraft have been added. If you want to see uh, these mechanics in action, 
I did make a dev server video on them, so you can go and check them out there. I will make sure to do some videos in the future looking at them as well in game on the live server. Field repair mechanics have been updated in Ground Forces RB. Field repair will now be carried out only in the absence of an installed parts modification and must be activated manually. I think that's completely fine. Uh, the reason why it was put in there was for people who don't have parts. Therefore, now, you know, it, it's made it easier. Uh, I would like to see the FPE issue addressed, uh, but uh, that's another idea for another day. The possibility of a complete breach failure of a tank's cannon when it fires with a damaged breach has been added. In order to continue firing after a complete failure, the breach will need to be repaired the regular way via field repair. Okay, so pretty much the uh, arcade mechanic and realistic mechanics of, for suspension damage on wheeled ground vehicles has been implemented. Thank the Lord! My God, this was required uh, to actually make sense, you know, uh, of the, you know, because otherwise what would happen before is you just have a wheel shot and you would die. But now, you know, at least it's much more realistic. You're going to actually take damage to the suspension. It's going to change, you know, how your vehicle maneuvers. It's going to make you slower, going to make you a bit more grindy. I think this is much better than just disappearing. A bug related to the base defender reward has been fixed. In order to receive it, it is necessary to destroy the enemy who is capturing the points and thus hold the progress of capture. It means that the enemy must be the only player of the points. Okay, that's fine. Uh, all ALS, ALS, which are controlling ground vehicles, will be in custom battle missions and battle for beginners, can now use the FP modification. Okay, well that's good. Oh, AIs, sorry. <laughs> My god. So AIs can actually use FPE now. So you can't just set them on fire and leave them. That's really cool. Uh, they are learning. They're getting smarter. In the Assault Tank Arcade mode, AI ground vehicles can now use the parts modification to repair instead of the automatic repair made by the mission scripts and FPE modification. Oh lord, they are learning. The AI is getting progressively better in this game. Maybe at some point it would actually be used in a PvP sense, but we'll have to see. Uh, it'll be nice for custom missions as well. New achievements for the Italian ground forces have been added. Nice. Uh, hopefully this eventually will lead to medals and stuff like that being added as well, since I believe Italy only has three medals uh, that you can get in the game right now. Kind of like uh, with the French, how a bunch of French medals were added, uh, I believe either earlier this year or last year. It would be nice to see Italy get the same treatment. New daily tasks for naval battles have also been added. So Duck Hunt, uh, destroy enemy aircraft in combined battles. On course, destroy ground and waterborne targets uh, using an attacker or helicopter. Helicopter? Huh. Masthead uh, bomber, destroy ground and waterborne targets using a bomber. Hurricane, destroy three enemy fighters in every battle for the required number of battles. Big Catch, destroy three enemy bombers in every battle for a required number of battles. Sea Urchin, achieve a winning streak of five victories over enemy vessels uh, the required number of times. Shark, uh, achieve a winning streak of ten victories over enemy vessels the required number of times. The Flying Dutchman, capture strategic points using a hydroplane <laughs> sword. Destroy enemy vessels while in an aircraft using torpedoes. Whaleman. Destroy enemy destroyers and cruisers while in a vessel using torpedoes. 27 cables. Destroy enemy destroyers and cruisers using a destroyer's offensive armament from a distance of at least 27 cables. Um, these all are positive. Uh, Petrel, uh, win a battle achieving the required damage to naval targets. Cannoneer, achieve the required damage to naval targets. Captain Octopus, <laughs> win the required number of battles, fulfilling three conditions in each of them. Destroy one enemy vessel, destroy one enemy aircraft, uh, capture a strategic point. Uh, rock, destroy enemy vessels while at an allied strategic point. Do not swim over the boys. Uh, destroy enemy vessels that are at a strategic point. So overall, these are added to naval, and they seem to be, well, a lot of them seem copies uh, of the pre-existing ones that we see from aircraft and also from uh, ground vehicles. But overall, this is positive uh, for the naval stuff because it gives people a reason to play. Uh, you know, the daily tasks there, where before there wasn't really a way of doing them unless you wanted to do the aircraft stuff. So overall, I'm happy to see this. 
Hopefully in the future we see a few more of them. Uh, there is obviously some which are specific to Naval, which is also good, but overall these seem very positive. The system for tracking your shells has been improved. In AB and RB, the timer and sound signal by fall the shell into the water has been added. We uh, showed this on the dev server. Overall, I'm very happy to see that uh, it was added. I think it's a nice little feature. The ability to turn on or off the audio signal in the game menu. So menu options, main parameters, naval battle settings has been added. Good. And the minimum caliber at which the system operates is 76 millimeters. Ah, well, lovely. Uh, that pretty much means that you can turn off the sound signal if you want, and uh, therefore it is nice to see that they're giving players options to either turn it off, turn it on, but putting it in there in the first place. That's what I like about this stuff, you know. The mechanics are there for you to use. If you don't want to use them, you don't have to. And then the last one, the color of the smoke at a capture point is now colored the same, uh, colored colored in the color of the team that controls us which is uh, lovely to see and i believe it does work if you change the colors as well because i run green and pink and i've definitely seen pink ones i've seen green ones and uh yeah it's just it's nice to see overall uh that uh, it just makes it easier for me personally to work out what's going on and also for the colorblind viewers that are out there it makes it easier for them Overall, a lot of changes here, and just remember when people say that they don't do bug reports, uh, point them towards stuff like this, point them towards uh, stuff like this, point them towards, you know, stuff like this. They do take into account bug reports, they do fix stuff, and they also do it historically. Uh, you just have to look uh, this stuff here as well <laughs> when it comes to historical stuff. Overall, a lot of very positive changes here. I will, I definitely have my issues, uh, such as the fact that a lot of these premium vehicles seem to be artificially lowered in BR, and also some of the costs of some of these vehicles, but I've already been through them in another video. Overall, this patch seems pretty positive. The only negative for me is that there isn't anything here that really interests me, apart from the SM92, which I've already done and already finished. So I'm hoping that the squadron stuff comes out soon for me personally, but it is nice to see everybody enjoying the top tier stuff uh, once again. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.